Oh, oh, hello. Hey, one one seventy uh, two seventy watch party. Hello. Uh, mic check, audio check, check check one two, check check. We good? Mic check, video check. How are we doing? Good. All right. Sound good, looks good. Hello, hello everyone. Oh, um What the hell? Is it two or eight? Uh hold on. Uno momento por favor. Yeah, get my virtual environment. Yeah. Ah, it is eight. It is eight. I was like, come on, man. I'm going to accept the risk and continue. Come on, man. Yeah, I know that. Bing. Is this thing on? Hey, buddy, is this thing on? Oh, cool. Um, hmm. Is this a, is a show extra keys, a full screen? What am I doing here? Is this thing working? Ah, hold on. Let me see if I do a reboot. Yeah, I'm going to reboot this. No, actually, I don't want to reboot now. What, what the hell? Oh, there we go. Hey, I'm finally in. All right, good, good, good. Can you all see? Oh, look at that. Not making me excited for my migration to Proxmox. Hey, Proxmox is wonderful. It is wonderful. What are you going to do? Go to v go get an ESXi? What's the plan for today? Memory lane. I actually need this. I actually need to get this thing running. Um, the plan today... I'm going to take a step back memory lane. Forensics. All right. Now, I'm leaving because Brad got, yes, I know that, but that's not news. You know, that's not news. All right, ready to go. We're ready to go. Hello, everyone. I'm Ming. Uh, episode 10. Season number 8. Yes, 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 yes. Today. Um, this is the second to last class of the season. Yeah, it's been a fun. Been a lot of fun. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun this semester. Um, hope you had as much fun as I did. Um, today, I'm going to take a step back memory down memory lane. And today's topic is going to be forensics. Yeah, I'm going to talk about forensics today. Computer forensics. Now, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about my, uh, well, I used to do some work with uh, law enforcement back in the days. Yeah, back in the 2000s, I did. Uh, and one of the big questions and why I saved forensics for the last topic of this course is very much like malware and iPad, um, you're going to need to know everything that you have done before, um, for the weeks before, to understand and do forensics. Uh, that I'll, well, I'll mention that, but certainly you'll need things like the Linux command line skills, okay? So, um, I want to take a quick review. You go to CS116, go to that first lab that we did. That first lab that we did is working with the command line. When you do forensics, you get to know um, some of the important command here, like strings, for example. But you remember in the very first lab, this lab, I asked the question, 
what command can you use to securely delete a file? And there's a reason why I asked that question. The wrong answer that I was looking for on, you know, what command to securely delete a file is, if you just said RM, if you did a straight RM to remove a file, it's the wrong answer. And one of the things today I am going to show you is how do you resurrect files that were removed with straight RM or if you just dumped a file into like the trash can of your operating system. Yeah, the proper answer, as APT Student 04 said, to really make a file, to really securely delete a file, that mean it cannot be recovered, even if you pay thousands of dollars to um, a digital uh, examiner to recover, use shred. Use shred. Uh, and yes, I am going to show you today how do you recover files that were deleted with straight RM. And you also, like you, some of a lot of you folks may also have heard, you know, RM doesn't really remove a file. That's correct. RM doesn't really remove or delete the file completely. There's a pointer. The pointer gets deleted to the file, but the actual contents still around. Yeah. But... As usual, when we get to a topic such as forensics, we need to get uh, have a basic understanding of some of the terminology and definitions. Okay, so today what we're going to do is we are going to learn how to acquire data from a disk using DD. The fabled and legendary DD tool. We're going to analyze an image from uh, of a disk uh, from DD. We're going to use uh, Salute Kit and Autopsy. We're also going to use Foremost uh, to recover files. We're going to recover, uh, yeah, and we're going to recover files off of a disk. Okay. Oh, today is one of those days I need to bring out a prop, and that is called a USB stick. Okay. So, here's a scenario. The scenario is, imagine if you have been attacked, compromised, this also includes malware, or, or is involved in a criminal incident. What's the evidence? What happened? When? Who was involved? The who, what, when, where, why? That's really the goal, and that is really the goal of forensics. Forensics is pretty concrete. you got to understand the who, what, when, where, why, and also how, of an incident that happens okay so what is forensics by definition what forensics is is preservation identification extraction interpretation and documentation of computer media okay preservation identification extraction so it really boils down to five words the most important part of forensics is the interpretation and the documentation. You need to show the evidence. And you always assume that if you ever do forensics work, always assume that you will be uh, called in the court of law to go and explain your work, your methodology, your findings. So this is not one of those, like, quote-unquote, homework assignments that you just wing at. The stakes are pretty high when you work with forensics. So you, whenever you do forensic work, you got to be extremely clear and detailed on your findings, um, your methodology, and your documentation, because you always assume that you will be called into the court of law. And if you make one tiny mistake, you can throw off an entire case. And you don't want that. And, that, and also that goes your rep, go, there goes your reputation as well. So we're going to do what is called the cradle to grave process. We're going to talk about the like we're going to give a we're going to give a gloss at the entire process on bagging and tagging. Uh, we're going to probably go through the interpretation, but documentation. Um, you know that 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 can be a like a laborious process. I used to do a forensic sex uh, forensics lab in the course, but you know it um it takes a lot of work to do. So now I just resort to malware, which is I feel is even more important topic. 
So the process is, okay, you assess the situation, you go to a scene of an incident, you acquire the data, analyze the data, and then you have to write your report. And we're going to focus a lot on uh, acquiring an analysis, okay? But before you do any work, before you do anything, before you go to the city or go, go to the incident, in law enforcement land, eh, before you go into a incident or a scene or whatever you need to obtain, you need to obtain a search warrant. And here is the application for a search warrant in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, Based on the information, there's probable cause. I believe that the property described below has, you know, uh, let's say has stolen or embezzled, uh, obtained false pretenses, uh, has uh, used the stuff for committing a crime, has been concealed to prevent a crime from being discovered, is unlawfully possessed or concealed for an unlawful purpose, is evidence of a crime or evidence of criminal activity, um, you have to fill this out, you have to actually get this, um, have to be signed, uh, not only by the application, but by the court as well. So this is the application for a search warrant, and how to cite an example of a search warrant is once it has been approved. Um, you know, uh, here it is, you are, okay, now you have a search warrant. You can go into the property uh, and you can start seizing evidence. And in the back of the search warrant, there is also um, a list, a bunch of lines. This is where you put an inventory of your finding. So you go into a situation, you will need to think things like the physical drives, the router, the computer phone, electronic devices, um, back in the ye good old days, CDs, uh, all the media. You have to collect them, box them, and also make an inventory of your items uh, that you found. Okay? So, all right, we collected all of our evidence. We've collected all of our physical items. Now, like, what do you do? Now... <laughs> One of the worst things that you can do in a, a criminal incident, especially if you're on scene, and you see a running computer, one of the worst things that you can do is pull the power plug. One of the worst things that you can do. Because you once you pull the power once you pull the plug, lots of information is gone. Okay? And you don't want that. Now, when you do forensic, when you're acquiring data, when you're quite acquiring evidence, you have to deal with not only non-volatile data like disk and hard drive, but also volatile data. These days, RAM processes, um, memory, um, cache can hold some pretty damn valuable information, including passwords, credentials, and even photos. Okay, now, acquisition of data. There's two ways that you can do. First one is a physical acquisition, bit by bit copy of an entire physical store. You can also do a bit by bit copies of cer only certain files, directories on a file system. Time out. Let me get, get a proper. Uh, actually, hold on. I'm just going to get my prop. Uh, props. 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 Aha! Props. I'll introduce it. Ta da! Props. Here it is. This is a USB stick right here. Now this is a USB drive and in the USB drive I have a 32 gigabyte SD card. Yeah, that's also part of, that's also non-volatile data. Now I have 32 gigabytes here. Okay. So I can choose to do either a physical acquisition or a logical acquisition 
of data off of this drive. Now a bit by bit copy of the entire physical store here, all 32 gigabytes. Okay, it's probably the easiest thing to do, but it also will take the longest. So a physical acquisition is to make a complete copy of this 32 gigabyte USB drive. Okay, so to do a bit by bit copy, it's gonna take a while. Um, that could take a, a 32 gigabyte, that could probably take three hours to do a full bit by bit copy. First of all, it takes a long damn time, but also that 32 gigabytes is a lot of data. Okay, so, but it's also the easiest way, it's the, the easiest thing to do because all you just need to do is just one line of DD, which we'll talk about in a bit. Now, you do physical acquisition, it becomes like trying to get them, you're trying to get certain evidence off of here. It's like needle in a haystack. You don't want to go through all 32 gigabytes of data into here. But you only certainly only know like some of the most important stuff are found in certain directories and files. A good example is a phone. Uh, for Android phone, if you know that there's only certain folders that you're going to look at, what you can do is you can, instead of making an entire bit-by-bit -bit copy of the entire phone, you only get certain directories. Like, oh, the images folder, uh, up there where pictures and contacts are, or the home directory. The good news is there's a lot less files to work with. The bad news is what happens if you miss something. Okay, so physical and logical acquisition has its pros and cons. Okay, now, before you do acquisition, you want to make sure that you actually are copying data and doing acquisition by way of a write blocker. Now, I don't have one of these because they're damn expensive. A write blocker is a device that allows for acquisition of information, but there is absolutely, but it prevents any sort of writing to the drive. I repeat, a write blocker removes the ability to write, you can only copy, only read. You, there is no, there absolutely is no way of writing to the drive. I'll show you, a, I'll show you an example of a write blocker. Now these can cost hundreds of, hundreds of dollars. A write blocker. Here's what a write blocker looks like in um, forensic land. Bing! Here you go. So a write blocker is this. It looks like one of these. It just edits the disk stream. Uh, it just edits the disk command stream. Uh, uh, I, I don't understand. It was a great article on Linux Journal one time on write blockers. Make write blockers uh, for Linux. Right blocker, hardware right blockers. Here we go. Uh, yeah, so right blockers are devices that allow acquisition of without coming accidentally. You hate this by, by reading. Oh, I just took it from here. Okay. Um, right blockers may also include drive protection, which will limit the speed of the drive. Okay, there you go. Hardware right blockers can be either be IDE to IDE, Firebase, okay, Fire, Firewire to USB. Okay. Um, commercial tableau got one. Uh, I just want to get a picture of one of these. Yeah, here's one. Okay, so one connection. Okay, so set up power in. Okay, this is where the power is. So you would actually connect, oh, let's say one end to the drive that you want to copy to. Another line that actually goes to like a big drive that actually starts to collect all your, like, you know, make a copy of that, where will, which will store a copy of your drive. Here's another one. All right, we're going to make a copy of this 2.5 SATA hard drive. Hook it into the, hook it into the uh, right blocker. Ah, and looks like the data goes right straight through the computer. Yep. Okay, so these cost a couple hundred dollars, uh, a couple hundred dollars, if not thousands of dollars, 
it just will eliminate any sort of writing to the drive you just want to make a like when you're making a copy of a drive the worst thing that can happen if someone starts writing to it which will um can well um you know if you're writing data to a drive i mean that also includes deleting you don't want that uh so we've seen a case where <sighs> Oh, a malware operator realized, oh crap, like it looks like, seems like there's an entire drive being copied or the potential, uh, uh, potentially law enforcement making a copy of the drive. Shit, we got to delete our evidence right now. Yeah, so we've seen that. You don't want that stuff to happen. You don't want that stuff to happen. Chain of custody is a chronological documentation from warrant, seizure, custody, control, transfer, analysis. This goes on. Okay, what happened? What could possibly go wrong if you don't use the right blocker to acquire evidence? Well, I guess we just talked about that. If you don't use the right blocker, then you got people writing to uh, writing to the copying of the like when you're copying a drive, you have the potential of you know things getting deleted. That's not good. You don't want that. What are the pros and cons of physical and logical acquisition? Well, physical acquisition takes the entire copy of a, you know, of a disk or a drive. And that takes hours. And I mean hours on end. 32 gigabyte, 3 to 5 hours. I mean, the, more, I mean, the bigger the drive, it's going to take forever to copy. Okay. Uh, usually during when you do phone investigation, logical is the way to go because you just want to carve out, okay, we're going to look at this particular, this section of disk because we're pretty damn sure this is where the evidence is. is. Forensics tools, believe it or not, you know, a lot of it is not that special. Uh, it's stuff that you already know. Things like strings, um, MD5, the, uh, you know, calculating hashes. Calculating hashes is uh, really important because you want the integrity. You need to maintain and preserve the integrity of your evidence that you're working with. We're going to get to DD in a few moments. Uh, uh, forensics Toolkit, FTK, and NK. NK is commercial, but it is the gold standard. Thousands of dollars, commercial, largely closed source. And it is the way, uh, it is like the gold standard used by law enforcement and forensics agencies all around the world. Hey, Steg Detect, does that ring a bell? When you copy a drive, does it leave a trace? Uh, the answer is generally, that's a really good question. When you copy a drive, does it leave a trace on the system? And the answer is no. It does not. It does not. Okay, when you write... Totally different story, yes. Okay. Uh, Salute Kit and Ostropsy are open source and foremost, which we will look at and use today. Steg Detect, doesn't that actually ring a bell? Captain a Flag game, anyone? So, one of the things, the uh, challenges, just on a side note, one of the challenges I put in the Captain a Flag game each and every, like every so often, is um, steganography challenge, which is hiding data inside of other data, namely text or data inside of a picture. And that is a really good way to actually go under the radar and, you know, not being found out by forensics and, and investigators. Mm. All right, demo time. All right, demo time. Demos. All right. Now, folks, we're going to uh, use one, two, three tools to dive for, I don't know, next 30 minutes. DD, Salute Kit, and Autopsy, and Foremost. All right. So, the first thing I want to do is, I have, well, here. Baseline, I got a Mac OS here. And I have this USB stick. I'm going to plug it in. Mm. 
There it is. Ah, yes. Um, to APT student 04, now I know what this disc was. This disc was my boot disc when I actually set up my Proxmox server. So this was the boot disc. I can mail this to you if you want. APT student 04, when you do your mo you want to do your migration to PVE, I can mail you this, yeah, this SD card if you want. Let me know. Okay, so here I am. I'm going to do a get info on this disk, and this is 1.28 gigabyte. Really? That doesn't sound right. Hmm. That may be only one partition of the, of the hard drive. Okay, interesting. This is what we're going to do. The first thing that you want to do, now you're on Mac OS land. You want, if you're on Mac OS land, and I want to make a copy, remember I said that this SD card is 32 gigabytes, all right? And we want to go to a physical full disk acquisition of the drive, all 32 gigs. The first thing that you need to do is to get the quote-unquote name, the computer name of the drive, okay? Now what we're going to do next is we're going to make a, th we're going to make a full physical acquisition of this 32 gigabytes. 2 gigabyte SD card, which unfortunately you only see as 1 gigabyte for some reason. Yeah, it's a partition side. The first thing that you want to do in Mac OS land, have anyone ever used something out of disk utility? Disk utility is graphical based, but this is where you see, oh, interesting. You can see all your volumes. You have H -I -H -H -D -I utils. Here it is. 8 point, really? I, 1.28 gig, this doesn't look right. All right, anyway, let's quit out of here. The graphical version, and we're not going to use the graphical version of disk utility. We want to use the command line version of disk utility so we can really see everything. Man, disk utility. Disk utility on Mac OS only is to modify, verify, and repair local disk. Okay, yep. I uh, have it to tell the menu to show you the physical media now. Well, no, don't worry, don't worry. But by, by default, Mac OS will only show you the logical volume. So what we're going to do is sudo disk util list. And this will actually show... Hey, here we go. So it's going to show you all the, the, the physical disk now. Slash dev slash disk zero. Yeah, that's my hard drive. My actual on my on my MacBook. Slash dev slash disk three is where all of my data and content is. It's also encrypted. Aha! Remember how I said that this is a thirty-two gigabyte SD card? Well here we go. It is said here it is. Slash dev slash disk four is the external physical disk. And then it's broken down. It has five partitions, a shit ton of partitions, including free space here. Hmm. Okay. So, if you want to do a logical acquisition of a drive, let's say, for example, you want to do um, a copy of the 1.3 gigabyte, you need to make a copy and make the identifier, which is disk 4 s 3 Okay, but we want to do a full disk acquisition so we get everything. So we need to make a copy of this name, slash dev slash disk 4. I'm going to copy that. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my desktop right now. I'm going to do an LS, and you got there's nothing here. So now, how do you do a bit-by-bit -bit copy of a drive or a file? And the tool that we're going to use is DD. Now, here's a trivia question for each and every one of you. DD. Does anyone know what DD stands for? Trick question. A very trick question. Does anyone here know what DD stands for? The fun war story. Anyone know what DD stands for? Uh, 
Danny White, DD. Okay. Believe it or not, DD stands for Convert and Copy. What? Yes, DD stands for Convert and Copy. I kid you not. Man DD. Convert and copy a file. The DD utilities copies the, the standard input to the standard output. Input data is read and written in 512 byte blocks. There, I said it. What? Wait a minute. Why? Wait a minute. If DD, wait a minute. Why isn't it CC? Well, here's the reason why. Here is the reason why. The developed the original uh, folks uh, that built Linux, uh, Unix, sorry, not Linux, Unix. Back in the good old days, you know, they weren't typers. They weren't typers. You know, how they typed was two fingers. They did C, D, R, M, L, S, you know, P, S, uh, you know, M, V, R, M, I don't know if you notice that. You notice that a lot of the, you know, quintessential Unix and Linux commands are two to, like, really short, like a couple characters long, like two characters. They didn't like to type. All right? So, okay, that's nice, but why isn't convert and copy CC? Because the reason is CC was already taken by the C compiler. So if you do type in CC right now, on any machine, it says um, it's really GCC. Okay, CC is a C compiler, so CC was already taken. So what they decided to do was, okay, CC is already taken. Now we'll just go a letter off DD. There you go. Yep. So DD stands for convert and copy. But let's take a look at the man page of convert and copy again. It actually uh, copies a standard input to the standard output. If input data is read and written in 512 byte blocks. So, all we need to do is this. To make a bit by bit copy of the 32 gigabyte SD card, all we need to do is sudo dd, okay, sudo space dd space if equals your input file, of equals your output file, and that's it. It's really simple syntax how DD works. It's DD space IF for input file equal, and then the OF file equals something. So the output file we're going to say is copy of disk dot. Now the extension can be you can use like dot ISO, dot DD, dot IMG, doesn't matter. I can say copy of disk dot DD. Your input file in this case is going to be remember uh, the name of the full, the name of our physical drive that we got from disk utils, which is slash dev slash disk four. That's it. So to make a bit by bit copy of the thirty two gigabyte SD card, we just do sudo space dd space if equal slash dev slash disk four whatever it is from uh, disk util space the out file equals copy of disk dot dd. Now all you have to do is just hit enter. Okay, there it is. And it's gonna start making copies in 512 byte blocks. So I'm gonna hit the control C to quit the copying. Now, you notice some weird, you notice something really weird. DD will not have any verbose outputs. So the only thing that you can do is just let it hang. DD is not going to give you any um, any output, any verbose, like any informational mess, nothing. You're only going to get output on the terminal. Either A, you do a control C, or when the disk has finished copying, which could be like three to five hours later. And here you go. You see... So the number of bytes transferred in 10 seconds, yada, yada, yada. How many records in, how many records out. Doesn't look like there were any corrupted stuff. And if you actually, what, we took 10 seconds to do this? So in 10 seconds, we got 221 megabytes 
uh, we copied 221 megabytes of the full SD card. Now I'm just going to delete this. All right, I'm just going to stop this again, but this time, now, if you do a man DD, yeah, hello bot. Fucking bot. 512 byte block. That can be pretty slow. If you decide to want to speed it up, if you want to, instead of do, can you actually do something faster than, uh, bigger than 512 byte blocks? And the answer is yes, you block size, BS. BS equals N, set the input and output block size to N byte, superseding the IBS and OBS operand, okay? So I can do something like, uh, go back up, block size equals five megabytes, okay? So instead of 512 byte blocks, I'm going to use 5 megabyte blocks. So I'm just going to hit the enter now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, we got 11 seconds now. All right. In 12 seconds, we copied this many bytes. So let's make a copy. Let's see how much it is. We got 241.2 megabyte okay now the biggest difference between block size is some people think okay bigger block size mean that um, we're gonna speed up the process well yeah but at the same time is you also risk uh, corruption as well too that is the bigger the block size you may have a chance of Oh, not copying everything, or you might risk of running into corrupted sectors or missing corrupted sectors. You may not get everything. There's a risk of that. Okay. Uh, so, okay. You don't believe me? Let's double check. Uh, DD bigger block size. Uh... How to calculate optimal block size. Okay, using DD. Okay. It's been a uh, number of DD has been suggested once. All right, DD is certainly most for uh, create 100% replica, but simply I've never had one. Be aware that while cloning every byte, you should not do this on a drive or partition that is being used, especially, okay, especially application like databases that can't cope with this very well as you might end up corrupting the data. Oh, interesting. Okay, cool. DDing a live drive can corrupt files. The reasoning is simple. It has no understanding of a file system activity that may be going on and makes no attempt to mitigate it. If a write is partially underway, and again, this is why you use a write blocker, you will get a partial write. Interesting. Okay. When using DD to clone a disk which may contain bad sectors, use OK to ensure that it doesn't stop when it encounters errors. Oh, interesting. OK. Also, here it is. You may find that DD speed can affect the block size setting. I usually try block size equal some big, but you may actually try to test it on your own so to see what works fastest for you. This assumes that you don't need to use a OK, interesting. All right. So now, I'm not going to make a copy of the entire SD card, okay? I'm going to use something else. I'm going to copy the evidence. Now, instead, I have something else. I'm going to clear the screen. I'm on my desktop right now. I'm going to do a wget http www.cs.cups.edu slash comp slash 116 slash evidence.dmg Oh, sorry. And you can play along. Hey, hey! That's weird. Hold on. I'm trying to put a paste in chat for some reason.
There you go. All right, folks. I just downloaded a copy of a disc that I copied from DD. Now, this DMG file is 50 megabytes. A lot smaller than 32 gigabytes, which is manageable. Now, one of the things that we can do, and I want you to take a look. I made a copy of this evidence.dmg file. This is a full disk. I don't need this anymore. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click and open this evidence.dmg disk. Are you ready? I have a copy. I may, Okay, here it is. Evidence.dmg. You double click on it and you got a drive. Now, I'm going to open up the drive. Here. Okay. I want you to folks to see. How many files do you see here? This is a very important question. Simple question. How many files do you see? Two. Two. APT student, you're interesting. You say in the finder, two. Okay. I'm going to fire up the terminal again. So I'm going to go my volume. I'm going to CD into evidence. I'm going to do an LS now. And you should only see two files. So far, so good. So far, so good. I'm going to do an LS minus LA now. So you can see all the hidden files. How many do you see? Okay. Do a count. How many files do you see? Not including the dot and the dot dot. One, two, three, four, five, six. You see, okay, Van, you see seven. You see all, okay, you guy, you folks see seven. You got that? You, you see seven. Okay, seven, four, okay, seven, four, four to seven. We'll, we'll, we'll give you a small number. Four to seven. Stop right there. The question, the next question is, are we really sure there's only four to seven files? That is, aren't the others directory? Yeah, the others are direct. Oh, yeah, I'll buy that one. So, okay, Hawks or USAI? Fair. Fair enough. Four to seven, I don't, okay, depending on what your answer is, you're saying four to seven right now. But I have a better question for asking you, the more important question. You really sure? Are there any deleted files here? Take a visual snapshot of this before we leave. Take a visual snapshot. Take a visual snapshot. You only see two in the finder here. The only thing here is you see a text file and you see this picture. Can we, del can we recover more files? Can we see more files than two? Where are the deleted files? Well, let's get out of Mac OS land now. And now, so far I've showed you DD. I've showed you how to actually make a bit-by-bit -bit copy of DD. Side note, a, a, a side note. If you ever work with Raspberry Pis and SD cards, you 
probably will use DD to make copies of the operating system and drive. Okay. What we're going to do next, what we are going to do next, is we're going to use Salute Kit and Autopsy. Salute Kit and Autopsy. Go to salutekit.org. Why is this not pasting for me today? This is dumb. All right, so Salute Kit and Autopsy, they go work together. All right, Autopsy is the graphical interface of Salute Kit and other digital forensics tools. It's used by law enforcement, military, corporate examiners to investigate what happened on a computer. You can even use it to recover photos from your camera's SD card, uh, memory card. Not bad. Not bad. So if I go home, Salute Kit is a collection of command line tools and C library that allows you to analyze disk images and recover files from, uh, from them. Autopsy is just a front end, a GUI front end. So Salute Kit and Autopsy is uh, um, platform independent. The front end, the newer front end, uh, uses Java. Okay. Uh, again, um, free and open source. Free and open source. So now, let's use um, Salute Kit and Autopsy that is on, well, APT student. I'm going to give you a little uh, preview of Proxmox. Okay, can you all see? Can you all see my screen? I'm right now, DEF CON, whatever. Can you all see this? All right, excellent, excellent. Yeah, so right now, I uh, I don't know if I told you folks, but during spring break, I created a brand new home lab server. At, I created a brand new home lab server. So my home lab server now has a whole bunch of virtual machines. I have a deliberately vulnerable virtual machine. I have an instance of Kali Linux running. I have a server with um, Docker containers and another um, uh, virtual machine where I'm going to do all programming work. And after next Thursday, I'm going to blow out my Mac. I'm going to delete everything. I'm going to only do AI stuff on it. All right, so cool. So here I am. This is Kali Linux. Okay, now Kali Linux is wonderful because it has all the cybersecurity tools that you, that you need all built in. So if you go to the menu... Kali Linux will have tools for information gathering, vulnerability analysis, you have seen NICTO and NMAP, web application analysis like BERP and SQL map, database assessment like SQL map, password attacks, things for tools like John the Ripper, uh, um, Hashcat, Hydra, wireless stuff, if you want to do wireless attacks you can do. Reverse engineering uh, tool like APK tool for well for Android APK bin uh, APK binaries. You can have tools for exploitation that includes things like SQL map and Metasploit, sniffing and spoofing. Yeah, you ever seen sniffing and spoofing with Wireshark, BetterCamp, EaterCamp, post exploitation, and also forensics tools. We'll get to that in a few moments. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to open up my command line terminal. So I'm going to go to my workspace. CD Forensics. You see that evidence.dmg file? I'm going to delete it. I'll do a wget again. So, just to make sure we're not fooling anyone. Okay. 
So we got evidence.dmg. Now we made one small mistake. Anytime you download a file, you want to calculate the checksum of that uh, of the thing that you downloaded to make sure you're really, really analyzing the correct version of the evidence. So now I can do like open SSL SHA-256 evidence.gmg and a 6A, 4F, okay, all the way to 3EDA. Nice. All right. So I'm going to hit exit. I'm going to get out of here. Now I'm going to go to forensics. Now I'm going to go to autopsy. Well, actually, I don't need to do that. I can do that, can I? There it is. Evidence locker and then slash var slash live slash autopsy. The next thing is open an HTML browser on a remote host and paste this URL in. Keep this process running and use control C to exit. Alright, I'm going to go open up a web browser now. There we go. Nice. Localhost slash 9000 autopsy. Wait a minute. Oh, 9999. Yeah, it's why the little things matter. There it is. The Autopsy Forensic Brother 2.24. Now, this is an older version, but it still works just as good. All right. It is recommended that it turned off for security reasons. All right, so I'm going to create a brand new case. The case is going to be Twitch 2024 04. Today's date, the 18th. Description. Um, evidence drive. I gave some investigators for this case. I'm going to make uh, we're all going to be investigators. I think that's the uh, investigators. I think that's a pretty good list of investigators that we got. I think that's a pretty good list of investigators. Did I miss anyone? Or anyone else want to be an investigator? Create a new case. Oh, oops. All right. We have ten investigators in this case. Watched it up, but it's okay, whatever. Uno Memento 444. All right, let's start again. Now, let's create another brand new case. That's called uh, 2404 18 1 evidence. Ah, just make people feel good here. Uh, 
add one more. Uh, Sunset Watcher. There we go. I'm going to create a brand new case. Uh, I'm going to say APT student. As the lead investigator and the host. Okay, uh, the host name of this computer being investigator. There's going to be a number of letters, description, time zone, time school zoom in, uh, uh, time skew adjustment. You know, we don't got any of that. Path of alert hash database. Okay. An optional hash database of known bad files. So if you're law enforcement, they have plenty of hash databases. I'll give you an example of um, child abuse material. And so this is where if you have one of those databases, you know, it's always the lookup table of just hashes. You put it in here. Um, and the value of those hash databases is you don't ever have to look at the pictures. So if it just does a scan of the entire drive, it does... It, calculates the cache of all the files and if that hash shows up in the hash database you know there is um, child sexual abuse material that is on that drive path of ignore hash database um, known good files that you just say okay let it go for example uh, like cmd.exe um, just ignore it hash collisions uh, yeah uh, let's not worry about that um, yeah, uh, let's not worry about hash collision. Um, yeah, let's, yeah, let's not, let's not. Because it's very hard to do. All right, here we go. Now is, let's add an image for this host. And this is where you will need, I'm going to open up another new, brand new tab. Where did we put, um, where did we put the DMG file? Here. It's slash home slash depcon slash workspace slash forensics. And the location is, oh, that evidence dot DMG. There it is. Now, please select if this image is a, if this image file is for a disk or a single partition, it's a disk. Now, import method, are we gonna, it must be located in the evidence locker. You can make a direct copy of it, but that could take a, a lot of disk space. We're just gonna make an alias, a sim link to, or an alias, a shortcut to slash home slash defcon slash workspace slash forensic slash evidence dot dmg. Yeah, that's the most efficient way of doing things. Hit next. Yeah, let's ignore. All right, and let's do an ad. All right. All right, folks, and here's our case. So interesting, we have two drives. We have a, a disk and a C drive. Let's analyze. Let's analyze the first disk, and what we're going to get is, oh, keyword search. Oh. Okay. All right, that's nice. Can we do uh, IP for IP address? Okay. But one thing I'm extremely disappointed about. There's no file analysis tab. This is open. This is closed. This is not good. The keyword search, yeah, here it is. The keyword search runs grep on the image. A list of what will and will, what will not be found is available here. Keyword searches are very basic and autopsy. Autopsy uses string and grep tools. Things that you already know. 
what will be found, what may be found, but interesting. But one disappointing thing is there's no file analysis. Let's close this. Well, our only hope is to analyze the C-mount. See what happens now. Well, here goes nothing, folks. Let's analyze the C drive. Ooh. Okay. Now, just a quick review. Remember on the Mac OS, we took a look at the drive. How many files did you see? Remember how many files you saw on the Finder? Remember? Two to seven. Are we ready? Okay. Are we good? Are we ready? Are you ready? Let's do a file analysis now. File browsing mode. In this mode, you can view files and directory content. File content will be showed here in this window. Okay. Are you ready? Hey, folks. Oh. Oh. What do you think the red color means? What do you think the blue color means? Anyone want to take a wild guess? Hey, remember the dot trashes, dot temporary items? You saw that in the uh, terminal in Mac OS, right? They're in blue. Now you're seeing a bunch of files in red. Are we ready? Take a look. Anyone see a pattern here? What do you think the red color items are? Indeed. Files that are in red are deleted files. The ones that are in blue, they're not deleted. They're on disk. Oh, yeah. You can see all the binary files. You can see the binaries of the file. There you go. Okay. Keyword search. Uh, SSN1. You're not going to get that. Uh, you can see any file. They're just going to do a rudimentary string search. Oh yeah. All the red all the files in red are deleted files. On the Mac OS terminal and on Finder you saw between two to seven files. You're seeing way more than seven files, folks, here. 
just this shot alone, you have a lot of stuff that you did not see in the finder. And that's all the deleted files that were in evidence.dmg. Oh, yeah. Well, folks, I think that's all I got for the... That's all I got for this case. Case closed. Oh, I can't. And there's a funny thing here. I don't think I can delete a case. Which is kind of good. There you go. This is going to be in uh, our memories and uh, in a nice archive. We got all the investigators. Thanks to all the investigators in this case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it is. Yeah, we're good. But we're not done. Close the case. Now, to get out of here, all you just need to do is... Just exit the terminal, control C to exit. But we're not done. Oh no. Oh no, we are not done. I'm going to take another uh, trip down memory lane. How long ago did I do this stuff with law enforcement? Two thousand nine. Yeah, fun times. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to the High Tech Crimes Investigation Association. HTCIA.org. An international organization. The High Tech Crime Investigation Association was created in 1986 and probably one of, and they are one of the most prestigious uh, associations solely focused on high tech uh, investigations. Um, want to give a shout out Obligatory, obligatory shout out to the HTCIA. Um, I was a member from 2006 to like the early 2010s. Um, my work with them only got great, great memories. A lot of good memories. Uh, and they helped me, you know, they helped propel my career to where I am today. Uh, want to give a shout out to Medford Police. Uh, they sponsored me uh, for HTCIA. And I met a lot of great people in this organization. Um, you know, if you ever have the opportunity to join the HTCIA or um, to work with people like in law enforcement, uh, it's an honor. Um, would recommend it. Uh, you know, just the networking alone is super, super, super valuable. Only good things to say, but uh, as a reason, I haven't, I haven't paid my dues in like over ten years to them. Um, but only got great things to say about HDCIA. Uh, they had uh, the, the New England chapter had just banger Christmas parties each and every year. So much fun, so much fun. But one of my favorite, one of my presentation I did many years ago with the HTCIA was, um, well, investigations uh, using Backtrack, which is now Kali Linux. Okay, uh, here's some of the basics. Um, one of the things I did talk about, I did show you a DD. Uh, short DD has some shortcomings, such as it doesn't give you any uh, information of verbose mode. Uh, DCFLDD was created by the Defense Cyber Forensics Lab by the Department of Defense. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to Jim Christie, who used to, yeah, the Department of Defense Cyber Crime Center, DC3. Uh, he used to head this lab. And uh, guy even gave me a Department of Defense Challenge coin. That priceless. I mean, that stuff is priceless. DCFLDD will do has a status bar, can be used for wiping this too, which is pretty cool and does calculations on the fly. There's also DD underscore rescue. Um, DD tried to read, uh, you know, DD underscore rescue will actually won't fail when it reads bad sectors off of a disk. But my favorite tool that I want to show you is Foremost, also developed by the Department of Defense Cybercrime Center. Uh, it's used for file carving and recovery. 
Uh, it's used that uh, reads like headers, footers, internal data structures, and has an audit file. Formos is free and open source, and it is such a nice, really simple command line tool. So what it can do is things like, okay, if you only want to rip out JPEG, or if you only want to rip out PNGs, or PDFs, or text files, okay? So I'm just going to do one right now. Okay, so go to workspace, CD forensics. So I have an evidence.dmg here. So I'm going to do foremost minus S1. Skip the first hundred. I think I skipped the first, what, hundred blocks, is it? Yep, skip first 100 blocks. All right, the uh, font type I'm going to say is uh, JPEG. And uh, the input file is going to be evidence.dmg. So what foremost will do is just, this is going to rip out all the JPEGs out of evidence.dmg. There? There's an output folder. More audit.txt. So here it is, foremost uh, 1.5.7, length 47 megabytes, skipping 50 kilobytes. And I found one, two, three, four, five, and it just ripped out five JPEG files. Five files extracted. By the way, man foremost. Foremost is recover files using the headers, footers, and data structures. Uh, recover files from a disk image based on a file type specified by user minus using the minus T switch. JPEG, GIF, PNG, BMP, AVI, EXE, MPEG, WAVE, RIP, Movies, PDF, DOC, ZIP. Quite a few files. Okay. So, wait a minute. CDJPEG. One, two, three, four, five files. Is there a way that we can see all five? Yeah, sure. Uh, I can go to the file lookup. Uh, the file browser. Got a workspace. Got a forensics. Got an output. Got a JPEG. First JPEG. Oh. Bastards. First JPEG. Second JPEG, third JPEG, fourth JPEG, fifth JPEG. Not bad. Not bad. And you did not see these files in the terminal or on the Finder on Mac OS the first time around. Yeah. So. Can you recover deleted files? You sure as hell can. You sure can, folks. You sure can. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to log out of this Cali instance. I'm going to log out of Proxmox, APT student. Yes, I absolutely love Proxmox. Yeah, I love it. So, you may be wondering, is that it for today? Well... Generally speaking, there is. We've done all this. We've done a demo, so you've seen Foremost, you've seen Salute Kit. We've recovered files with Foremost and Salute Kit. We've made a copy of a drive with DD. Where do we go from here? You know what? I think it's most appropriate for me to stop here and save incident handling and to talk about the SANS Institute next Thursday, the very last day of this season, where we're going to delve into, okay, where do you go from here? What opportunities will you, do I have after this? And the answer is quite a bit. Okay. Some free, some will have a cost, but there's a, you barely scratched the surface. That's all I got, folks, for today.
Thanks for joining. See you next Thursday. Yeah, this is fun. Yeah, it's fun.